The majority of people, when it comes to their choice of summer entertainment, tend to watch movies that include pirates on the hunt for riches, epic adventures, and ceaseless exploration in the pursuit of uncovering great mysteries and untold origins. However, what the vast majority of people are unaware of is the fact that there is treasure and mysteries concealed all around us. Stay here with us to the very end as we take you through the finding of some mysterious boxes that were discovered recently. People have found all sorts of interesting stuff hidden in their attics or basements. However, finding a complete chest is quite remarkable. It's not merely the fact that these big containers bring up thoughts of the hidden wealth buried by pirates centuries ago, there's also the intrigue of what could be within. There was the predicament that one Reddit user came onto when he unearthed a mysterious chest in his grandfather's attic. The contents were, to put it mildly, unexpected. On one otherwise average rainy day, a Reddit member called John was in his grandfather's attic helping his folks take out some garbage. Alongside stuff that you'd ordinarily find in an attic, such as old photos and books, there was a bizarre wooden box with a medical sign on it. As a curious person, John had to peek inside. What could it have been? Since John's grandfather fought in the Pacific Theatre during World War II, he may have carried some antiques back over to the United States. John also observed characters that weren't in English. They appeared to be printed in what appeared to be an Asian language. Indeed, the box belonged to an enemy Japanese soldier. John understood very little Japanese, so he utilised the internet to assist him interpret the content. It turned out to have information regarding natural gas, and he learned that it had been put to use in making medical equipment. After John posted his story online, he gained a lot of attention. All sorts of people started to discuss their theories about what it could have been, including a World War II reenactor whose expertise was field medical. He went so far as to say that the box was dated March 1932, which was well before the United States entered the war. It wasn't until September of 1940 that even Japan joined the war effort. Unfortunately, the United States didn't join the Allies until the Japanese destroyed Pearl Harbor in Hawaii on December 7, 1941. The medicine cabinet was a reproduction from the Showa period, 1926 to 1989, when Japan was ruled by Emperor Hirohito. If anything was still inside the box, it should have been in excellent condition because it was a squad-level field medical kit and had been sealed to be airtight and watertight. A closer inspection of the medical supply chest revealed several cartons that had been neatly packed within the unit. John couldn't read the labels of any of the bottles or pills because they were written in Japanese. Given the advice he found on the internet, John decided to put the drug, no matter how old it was, to the test. Needless to say, this was a very risky approach. Who knows, it could have been toxic. John went ahead and tested the material nonetheless, starting with a little bottle of some type of purple liquid. Fortunately, it turned out to be just sugar water, as a translation discovered that the package said gum glucose liquid, which was simply supposed to raise blood sugar. The majority of the remaining bottles in the box's first layer contained sodium salicylate, a pain medication that predated aspirin. Other bottles just contained caffeine, which was utilised not only to increase energy, but also to reduce inflammation. It's a good thing he stopped there, because the following container contained bromisavil, an over-the-counter Japanese compound with potent nervous system effects. It is not only a sedative, but it can also be hypnotic. It was utilised to relieve anxiety at the time and was possibly even taken by kamikaze pilots. Another bottle bore the Latin text Liquor Novocaine Sterilizations" or Novocaine. This potent medication would have been used for intensive field surgery, such as bullet removal and possibly amputation. There were also additional supplies. There was a torch that would have been useful for field doctors, but by the time John found it, the batteries had leaked acid, so he had to handle it with gloves. In the bottom layer of the chest, there was also medical carbon, a mask and two small kerosene bottles. While checking the intravenous kit deep within the box, John wore his gloves. It was rusted, as were the rubber tubing and plunger. There was also a little box in the mix that contained something that resembled adrenaline. The box was marked Digitaminum and it contained Digitalis, a medication produced from foxglove flowers that dated back to the 1700s. 
It was used to treat arrhythmia, irregular heartbeats and other cardiovascular disorders. Of course, interest in the chest began to wane over time. Even the individual who assisted John in translating the labels didn't seem to be around very often. Still, John continued to investigate the contents, which is when he discovered a cryptic message within the box. The note was written in Japanese, but it was translated as adrenaline, novocaine, atropine. It was obvious that atropine, which could create terrifying hallucinations, was still in the package. What is the point of having something like that in there? Things got increasingly stranger when John noticed small empty glass bulbs. Some of the people John had met on the internet feared they had been used for cupping therapy, a Chinese procedure that involved employing suction on the skin to enhance blood flow with hot bulbs. John performed some research and was disappointed to discover that the medical chest was not very valuable. The old expired medicine was virtually rubbish, but the fact that it was all in its original containers was worth something. Whatever the case for the medicine, the chest itself was an authentic antique. More importantly, if he didn't make much money, the experience offered him incredible new insight into the life of his own grandfather. What John witnessed was so remarkable that calling his discoveries valuable would be an understatement. His grandfather ought to have been an interesting man. A recent archaeological excavation in Russia's rural Nevsky Piatachok region unearthed a mystery World War II era lockbox hidden in thick mud, along with other Nazi memorabilia. The story that takes place on this tiny stretch of ground called Nevsky Piatachok, which saw some of the fiercest fights of the war, if not ever, really sums up the Leningrad fight for survival. The box was also quite heavy. Whatever was inside must have looked important enough at one point in time for someone to bury it so far underground. The box was buried so deep that it seemed impossible that it could have been the work of just one person. Perhaps the land's topography had changed due to erosion or mudslides after it had been tucked away. Another theory is that the region was struck by a grenade or other explosive during the war. It looked exactly like a real treasure box, only with more dirt caked on top. How long has it been like this underground? And more importantly, what might possibly be inside? It appeared to have some kind of etching in the side, but it was impossible to tell what it said. The archaeologists were taken aback when they cracked open the box. It was like going back in time. Inside were the contents of someone's life from 70 years ago, carefully preserved. The things could have belonged to anyone, and their immaculate condition astounded everyone involved in the dig. They uncovered a German Reichsmark, a type of currency that was used between 1924 and 1948. There was also a card that appeared to identify a Nazi party member. It became evident that the lockbox contained the personal items of a German soldier. But why would he bury his belongings beneath the ground? While rummaging through the lockbox, the archaeologists uncovered garments, shoes, papers and newspaper scraps. Surprisingly, the newspaper clippings were still crisp and didn't appear aged at all, a tribute to the sealed box that held them. This was a true World War II time capsule. A box of cigars, evidently untouched, was also among the items inside. Because the box was totally filled and still wrapped in its original paper, whomever buried these things had presumably just purchased the cigars as well. All of these objects must have fascinated the archaeologists who unearthed them. The owner of the lockbox apparently enjoyed smoking cigars. A second box of smokes was discovered and it too was unopened. Perhaps this German soldier believed his side was going to win the war and wanted to celebrate. He appeared to be carrying all of his vices with him. It's no surprise that the box was so heavy when archaeologists originally discovered it. There were also two handles of Jamaican rum inside. While the lockbox indicated its owner's preferences, there was no information regarding what happened to the man or why his belongings were buried the way they were. The German soldier's headgear was also uncovered by the archaeologists. It was tattered and worn from battle. The hat had undoubtedly belonged to a Nazi soldier, but the fate of the guy who wore it was unknown. It's possible that his narrative will never be recounted, but we can definitely say that he is no longer among us. The Nazi's jacket was also inside and it was untouched. This man had either never worn it or had washed it before burying it with the rest of his belongings. He could have buried it for a variety of reasons. By far the most astonishing artefact 
was an identification tag which might be used to hunt down the owner of these objects as well as the story behind them. However, it did not appear to say the owner's full name. Other items were discovered on the ancient battleground as well, such as this pistol and other weapons that were scattered around. Another rusted version of the pistol, along with numerous other antiquities, was discovered not far from the spot. The diggers unearthed more antiquities that had remained intact since the war among the wreckage. These vintage license plates undoubtedly belonged to the local SS fighters. By the conclusion of the war, the Nazis had lost and tried everything they could to get rid of and conceal as many of these items as possible. Rusted helmets, work equipment, cans and other bits were collected and placed to tell their story. There is some debate over whether or not these objects are authentic. You have to wonder why these were buried in the first place. What do you think about these discoveries? Tell us in the comments.